My friends with Rust Belt Writers, they said, Tim, you know, can you maybe help us uh, figure out our rankings? We would love to be more visible on Google. We, we're not showing up as much as we like with our soil blends. And I said, you know what, Nathan, let's have an SEO party, get together and we'll record it so that other community composters, um, people that are in a position like you that want to sell soil and compost locally can kind of like watch this, learn from it and essentially take all that information and just run with it. Um, nothing that I'm sharing there is like rocket science. It's all fairly simple stuff. It's just a lot of tiny things that uh, have to come together to, for the big picture to work. So that being said, um, here's the recording. I hope you guys enjoy it and um, can learn something. So take notes and then get to optimizing your websites. Okay, so why don't you guys start with like giving me a little bit of your background. So I'm not just gonna, you know, like rush out and, and come at you with whatever. Maybe I'll, I'll get a few like where where you like where you where you think you are and where you want to get to like if you have already identified you know issues or you know strengths and right. well we've got tilth soil and we make potting soil and compost yeah. and we collect food scraps as under the name rust belt riders composting we started 10 years ago on bicycles uh, this April, and we um, anniversary coming up. I didn't even realize yeah. that. And now, th last year we did about thirty three hundred tons of food scraps with box trucks mostly, and we're so we're still small, but we would like to be selling more of our products. We would really like product sales to be the largest portion of our overall company revenue beyond collections. Yeah. Right now it's um, a little bit less than collections. Um, so okay. we think that there's a lot of potential to sell more of our various mixes. Yeah. Uh, and we sell to home gardeners, organic vegetable growers, and organic cannabis growers. Those are our three. Okay. Yeah. And we sell through our website. And we, we, yeah, we have a platform on our website, Shopify, to sell through. And we sell direct to consumer or B2B, I guess, business to business in terms of to directly to farmers and directly to commercial cannabis operations and also yeah. to retail stores. Yeah. So, so then, I mean, the recent um, changes in the Ohio legislation might just open up a new opportunity. Yes. just by Right. So we I really think there's a huge opportunity with issue two passing by such a wide margin. Yeah. That, there's there's a really there's a, a moment which is right now um, to get ahead of people wanting to grow cannabis at home that have been deterred by its Ill, by its legal status previously because you know there's plenty of people that have been growing cannabis for years but now there are now there's a wide open thing you can talk about it in public and uh, there's a lot of national brands that in my experience and the experience of several of the growers that we work with. Our stuff is better than, and we also have a much better local story about it too. And, yeah. um, you know, we've heard from some people that it's hard to find our stuff. Uh, okay. like, of course, we were hard to find out about. And some of that's through searches, like people not finding us through searches. It's also, we need to be in more physical retail outlets across the state. Um, and we need to just have a, a larger presence. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, to add on to that, I think we've done a really great job of using our network as far as people who we work with on a composting front that hear about the soil that we make because of their efforts. And so I think we've done really great with word of mouth, but we recognize that there's a very large opportunity with continuing to just like push our message to a much wider audience outside of just greater Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's trying to tap into that much wider Midwest market, you could say, um, as well as to the cannabis front more specifically is that like a lot of the growers know that we use that we have soils, but not everybody knows that we have a cannabis specific soil. So okay. um, 
Like we want to make sure that when people think, oh, I'm going to be growing cannabis and soil, they want to, we want to make sure that they're thinking about tilth. We don't want them to think about it. And when they're thinking about growing cannabis for the first time, that growing in soil is the best and easiest way to do it. Hydroponics is crazy. Well, I mean, I guess that's how Mother Nature has been doing it for uh, thousands of years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it seems seems accurate. So, um, what I would like to do is essentially um, share the screen and open, you know, your your websites or your online presence. And how about you give me a, a a tour first, and then maybe I'll chime in on that. Or I could I could also like open it on my end and and just uh, tell you what I see. How about that? What do you want to what do you want to do? That's sure. I, oh, okay. Oh, no, you don't know. I was kind of interested in, in you yeah. being like well, looking at it with your marketing expertise and saying, mm -hmm. hmm, hmm, this, yeah. this, this, this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I actually, so, I, I, I agree with that because I'm looking at it all the time. We're looking at it all the time. So it might be nice to get a fresh perspective. Okay. So then maybe before we even go to your website, let's just kind of start with a, an empty tab and, um, and like, what should we, what should we uh, put in here? Like, um, you know, cannabis soil and then see what comes up here. Okay. So we have a, just some educational and then here we already have some, um, this is the, yeah, this related to those shopping results here, and I actually I researched um, um, I researched a little bit before, and I saw that tilth was listed, but more so, um, on other platforms. I think I saw it with Kurtz Brothers. Is that a possibility? Are you selling it through them? Did you guys hear me? Our internet dropped. It's back now. Ah, okay. So I think I saw your product uh, sold with Kurtz in this in the shopping results. Is that, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, because like obviously the shopping results are specific to um to essentially e-commerce platforms where there is an immediate way to purchase something. And I know you 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 run the um. The, the Shopify store. So I was kind of wondering why your store wasn't coming up in those results, but it was listed in other people's stores uh, on that shopping, yeah. you know? So, um, and, and under that shopping, does the Shopify normally populate for something that has? Yes. So in like, generally speaking, Shopify is a really good platform. Um, to run an e-commerce on they they have i mean they're, it's like a leading software in that area so um the base is definitely there and i mean so now you can see i i'm googling till soil which is obviously specific to your brand and s nobody would use that search if they don't already know your name right so do you guys have actually ever like done some sort of list of keywords um that you know just like a brainstorming and then and clustering the keywords in the groups uh, and categories that makes sense do you have like a master document or something on that no no why would okay. we do that <clears throat> well i mean so generally speaking if if the words aren't like specifically used then Google has a hard time making the connection. I mean, obviously there's like some things that are contextual where if someone searches for a phrase or something, Google might pull something up that is super related to it, right? But like if there's like a specific uh, phrase uh, um, and you're not using these words on your page, you know, then the chances to be found are not, not like quite zero, but like, you know, they're like way down. So essentially to, to optimize anything, um, 
you would have to really go back to the drawing board and kind of like sit down and say, hey, how are people calling our product? Okay, so um, for example, you call it a cannabis grow mix, right? But like some other people in that area might just call it a living soil, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you might call it a soil, a potting soil with compost and others then call it something else. So you want to essentially um, look at the whole, whole like products that you're selling and, and your website in the context of what, what is, how are people looking for that? And what kind of umbrellas can we, can we use for that? So like, let's kind of like say you mentioned home gardeners and home or, or like vegetable growers and cannabis growers. So that, that, that would be like three buckets that, that could be like a category. And then for each of those, we'll identify kind of like subcategories, which then might even have another subcategory or the actual list of words for each category that you want to um, start to rank for. Okay, right. So these are these are sets of words that we want to rank in search engines for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So okay. the, the and the prerequisite to to get those rankings is to be using those in your content, you know, and then why we are like making these umbrellas and categories is that, um, that like, let's say the umbrella is soil, you know, and then some, then there's like potting soil. There's um, like all these different types of soil or other words for soil, living soil, uh, soil with compost, um, soil for a raised bed, soil for um, maybe um, fig trees, soil for, uh, you know, like blueberries, soil mm -hmm. for, you, you know, so you're getting like into the, you're getting from the larger picture into the more nitty gritty and then really thinking about all these different types of soil and how people would call it. You know, some people call soil dirt. You know, and it's like, we would never call it dirt. You know, are you like using the term dirt anywhere? But like, especially in Ohio, there's like a lot of folks that like will say, oh, I got some really good dirt here, you know, and they're, they mean soil, but they're not calling it this. And so like, if someone types in like, I don't buy like, like uh, buy really good dirt, you know, like what comes up here? Like, I don't know, but you can, you know, ah. so it's, um, so, and, and, this is like already in the shopping results. I want to like get to the, the, the actual overview here. So it's kind of like, I think like buy might just trigger this now. Let's see. Yeah, it goes straight to the shopping results. So. <laughs> so yeah, so, so it goes into like fill dirt, topsoil, um, but you can see, you know, like these people here are using that word dirt, you know, and then here, these are related, like, okay, this is now where, where Google is trying to make an association. It's like, what is the intent of like really good dirt purchase? You know, what, what does that uh, place even mean? And, and you see like Walmart and the like Home Depots, they, they have an edge in some of these search uh results because google like knows them you know like it's they're everywhere so like see if you're like coming up here so you're like down here okay so and this now actually brings something up here you can see this this listing here has 93 um 93 ratings mm -hmm. and then bremick here has 99 and you can see walmart and home depot they don't have that many because they don't really they don't really um, make a point of asking or, or getting the, those reviews. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to, to like, that's a component where you can, um, can get better rankings, you know, like in, and you see these results here display even before the actual like results down here, like the, the search results that, that, you know, so optimizing for, either the shopping and these are sponsored ads up here. So that's really yeah. what you like, would have to pay for, for these rankings. So these are an organic mm -hmm. rankings and then you can see, okay, here's a Facebook marketplace. Interesting. Are you listing anything on Facebook marketplace? 
No, definitely not. See, it seems weird, but you should be. Like honestly, this really? is like yes, yeah, you should. I mean, this is this is a clear indication that listing your stuff on Facebook Marketplace is another platform. Hmm. You know, the, the 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 truth is with like a lot of like these results is like the large uh, platforms take all the rankings. So like think of like restaurants, right? If you look for a restaurant, what comes up? Like Yelp, TripAdvisor, and like all these other like big platforms that are nationwide, you know, that 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 are known to the search engines and stuff. So it's kind of like forces you to, to go there. It's the same. Like if you look for a lawyer, you'll first always see like these lawyer index sites where like I don't know, they're like Avo or like lawyer.com and all these others that are operation are operating nationwide. And you can almost, it's really hard to outcompete with them for rankings with your own website because they're so massive. Like imagine how many pages there are on Facebook or on Yelp, you know, on Trip and TripAdvisor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say listing stuff on um on Facebook Marketplace regularly um and essentially relisting them, like making a habit of like, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. I'm I'm not too familiar with how marketplace works, but I would definitely look into this and use it as a plus. So like with SEO, right? There is two two uh, rough categories that you can divide it in. One is on-page optimization, and on-page optimization is all the stuff that you can do actually on your own website. And then there's off-page optimization, and that's all the stuff that is not on your website. You know, it's called the internet it's a net, right? It's it's like all mm -hmm. these. So um, at a certain point, once your on-page optimization is kind of complete or at least like optimized to the max, there's nothing more you can really do on your own website to improve your rankings. But you can do all these other things off-page on other platforms and, and, and pages to optimize towards your page because it's about authority. So think about it. If I go outside and stand on the street and I yell something, you know, who really cares? Okay. But like if if like uh Taylor Swift goes outside the street and like yells something, like all of a sudden there's like, you know, all these people paying attention because so many people know that mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. So when you get mentioned on other platforms, like if if Facebook Marketplace mentions Tilt Soil mm -hmm. and Living Soil and all that stuff. It gives your platform authority because it means other places are like talking about you. Mm -hmm. So um, think about all these uh, people you talk. You said in um, when we started, you said we have a lot of good word of mouth and a good network with like some people around here. Mm -hmm. So what you should do is you should go back to all of them and ask them essentially, are you linking to our website yet? Okay. Like, so um, authority is a lot about getting mentioned and the, like mm -hmm. the, the um, you know, the royal discipline of like off page optimization is backlink building. So each link that points to your website is another gain in more authority. The more backlinks you have, the better essentially. And then it's also the higher the authority of that page that gives you a backlink, the better the quality of the backlink. So there's like quantity and quality with backlinks. It's like, if you get like a hundred kind of like shitty websites to link to you, that's pretty good. But if you could get like one major website to link to you, it could you give the power of like a hundred shitty links, you know? And you really want to leverage those connections that you have and make them link to you and ideally not just a link but a like put some context around it like give them a, a 300 word description of what you're doing who you are to be around that link so it's not just like here's a link and the logo but it's like a little description this is till soil out of cleveland and um, they're doing living soil, potting mixes, la la la. So then that link will have more context and then contextual backlinks have more quality for your, you know, 
to 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 improve your rankings. So it, now it's kind of like go back here to the to the thing. Um, so like I mean, you you see Reddit here, you know. Um, there is a whole category of using Reddit for SEO, mm. where it's almost like to the point where people have been like trying to abuse that, but um. Yeah, I would, you know, like make a point of maybe making a Reddit account yeah. uh, for Tilt Soil yeah. and, and, and engaging in discussions where people in Ohio are talking about home growing, you know, yeah. and, 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 um, and like be, you don't, don't be salesy, you know, give value. And if at all, try to leverage the other people. Yeah. Instead of like saying I'm the best, you can say, uh, I don't know who's like who you're working with. Like XYZ has been using this product for, for years mm -hmm. really successfully. Then you're also mentioning them, it's good for them. And um, you know, credibility, trust. It's like if someone else says something about you, it's always better than just if you are just saying it about yourself. Yeah. And that actually goes back to why you need to collect more reviews, because Google gives so much about, um, you know, other people's opinion, which isn't your opinion, you know, mm -hmm. and then think about it. We've been talking about keywords and that list. So if someone says, I purchased XYZ product name, or I purchased compost, I purchased that soil, then they're dropping the word. The I purchased soil, you know, which goes back. It's like purchase soil. I bought mm -hmm. blah, blah. It it's it becomes like their review becomes a keyword or multiple keywords, and it's like totally linked to your business. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So does it all make sense so far? You guys yes. taking notes okay. and feel 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 yeah, free to just um stop me because um one page I mean, and off page uh, optimization makes sense, but curious about how we can better our on-page optimization because like i've gone through and like tried to add keywords yeah um, but just continuing to do that would be really beneficial okay so first of all um before i look at this have you have you do you have like any sort of like local optimization on there How i don't that, know what that means yeah, what intentional. Does that mean? intentional so um if I am like if like if I'm in uh in Cleveland, right? Then I I mean you probably have the word Cleveland on there because that's your address, you know. Yeah. But are you using the words Cuyahoga County, Geauga County? Are you using Lakewood? Are you using Ohio City? You know, do you have Cleveland Heights in there? Shaker Heights, University Heights? I mean, like literally just open the map put the radius i mean you talked about the midwest market are there other larger cities like uh like what's an hour from here akron kent uh you know right, you right. name it okay so that's essentially another umbrella okay we talked about categorizing it by the product name soil okay local optimization is another umbrella which essentially goes into using counties, city names, and local terms, you know, um, to, to make that connection for anyone. Because the thing is like- but when you say, when you say local, you mean like geography local? Yes, exactly. So like, like local, local case, you mean like local yes. geography, gotcha, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, for example, um, Let's let's think about a uh, local service business for a minute, okay? Like a plumber or any any mm -hmm. sort of of that thing. So a plumber is like residing in Cleveland, but they're rendering their services around in like different cities. So there is essentially a strategy where you make landing pages for each of those city names for um, specific um, like services that they offer. You know, like uh, root canal you know, for a dentist and then University Heights. Because if someone just types in root canal, they'll get the Wikipedia page or the WebMD or whatever about what a root canal is. But they're not showing a dentist nearby that's going to give them a root canal. So they're going to essentially modify their search pretty quickly from root canal to root canal University Heights or root canal nearby, root canal Ohio, you know. So... 
by linking the two together, the what you're what the product or the service that you're doing and the location that you're that that it's available, then it becomes a, a much more narrow search phrase. And then Google knows, ah, I'm not looking for like, you know, root canals in all the United States. I'm really just looking, you know, around University Heights. Gotcha. So so that's like something that um you definitely need to like add to the website, like all these um local and there's like a few different ways of doing this um this was my next question is like where do we start to put that stuff yeah because it seems weird to just like cheesily insert these these words yeah it does it's like um so the thing is it's like if we're talking about um on-page optimization what's also very important is internal linking okay so let's kind of like see if you're like doing this when we're like look at your website you know like obviously your navigation on top are all internal links because it's like linking to a page within your page okay so then if we go down here you know we have a store locator okay that's like one internal link here and then you have those links towards the products good so they are all also all um like internal links but that's that's about it almost you know it's like not a lot more so what you want to like are you like doing a blog or anything irregular. you have a resource have center. A very irregular blog okay so if we're like looking at like a raised bed workshop you know then you know okay so there are the other ones, but essentially like you want it to like have a link to your raised bed mix in here, you know, like essentially all the things that might be related to each other, you want to link them with, with like, you want to have like three to five internal links, ideally on every page. So this will also give more context to the, to the um, crawl buds, you know, to understand what you're like actually selling here. So you got the soil blends, okay. Yeah, so then another thing is like, uh, so if I look at your your URL structure and that's, um, you can see up top it, it says your pages soil blends. See that? Yep. Okay, so I can click on that and I'll end up on this page and then good, we have those internal links to each of those, okay? Um, but like for a summary page, it's missing more context. Like for Sprout, there should be a little bit of a description here, what that is about. Mm. For each of those, I'd add a little bit of a description because this is now almost like an umbrella page or at, at least like yeah. I would call it a summary page of all your soil blends. And, and we are like talking about... Um, keywords right so the thing here is soil blends now the thing is the issue that i see here is when you click on actually on, on sprout okay what happens now it changes to products sprout okay and the issue here is obviously products is completely no context a product could be anything right and then sprout is also like if at all is like what you buy in the supermarket to eat you know, that's, that's, that is sprouts. Okay. So like the URL up here has zero context oh. for the, you know, so, so like, the URL even needs to be named in a descriptive way for the sake of the crawler. Yes, exactly. So if we're talking about what you can optimize, then you want to like, there's essentially three things. The URL should be 100% optimized. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can like look this up on my website. Uh, compost marketing agency okay it's just going to give you a reference uh like this is the main url here are our marketing packages so then it says compost marketing packages up here and you, when you click on one of those then you'll see it says compost marketing packages creative content and so now the context is creative content belongs to a marketing package so now it makes a connection of 
content, belongs to marketing, belongs to Combo's marketing agency, you know, like to that top mm -hmm. URL. So you're missing, you're missing that. Like, have you ever like written like a scientific kind of like uh, uh um taxonomy? You sound yeah, like you know, you know like how you make it, yeah, how you make like a table of contents, mm -hmm. and it's like chapter one, you know, sub sub chapter and then sub chapter of you know, like point whatever. And that is kind of like how you give hierarchy. So like mm -hmm. the URL structure should have a hierarch hier hierarchical order. You know, going back to those umbrella terms and categories I've been talking to, and then those, like you call them parent pages, and then they have their little children, you know, which are, which give more context. So yeah, I would definitely work on the URL structure. And one thing you need to keep in mind here, you have, you had this website for a while now, so mm -hmm. your, your website is indexed in that way. So for the rankings that you do have, they point to those URLs. So the worst thing that you can do now is to just change the URLs without adding a redirect, okay? So what you need to do is, you essentially, when you when you um, change your URL, you need to keep the old links and redirect them to the new links. And that's called a 301 redirect. And inside your Shopify, you should have... Um, some sort of like feature if you use WordPress or anything else, there's like a plugin called redirection and you make a list of all the old links. Okay. You make a list of all the new links and then you make sure that for all the old links that essentially will no longer exist, you put the redirect in. And if the search still points to that URL, you can click on it and it redirects you to the new page. And this way you can, keep all those old rankings. And by telling Google it's a 301 permanent redirect, it'll learn, ah, okay, it's now actually a new URL. And then after a while, it'll start to pick up these new URLs for you. And you won't just like, you know, uh, yeah, crank all your rankings that did you oh. actually, okay? So okay. whenever you touch that URL structure, that's really important to keep in mind. Yeah, and then the next thing is here, it's called just sprout. So obviously it should be called sprout soil at least. Soil. Like like sprout dash, like uh, soil dash uh, mix, you know, yeah. and then maybe like here it's a starting, it's like a starting mix. So it should be actually sprout soil starting mix. And the other thing is like a lot of people for that particular search might actually be lo looking for a seed starting mix or something. So you might actually want to add the word seed in there as well, because it could mm -hmm. be a contextual thing. And then here, this, uh, yeah, we can inspect this. Um, we can see, okay, let's see, this is your H1, okay? So the H1, you can see this here on the right. Do you see it says H1? Yeah. So, uh, you know, your your headlines have a hierarchy and H1 is like the top hierarchy, hierarchy one. Mm. So, um, yeah. So in terms of um, what you can or should optimize for each page is essentially the URL structure. We touched on that. The next thing is the page title. So if I go up here, your page title is also just Sprout up here. You see that? It's the okay, page title. Yeah. And then you repeat till soil. So it's good. The word soil is in there because it's your, your brand name, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, if we're like looking at any others, you know, here it says, here it says pick up till soil. Okay. So essentially you have a pattern of it'll automatically add the till soil to any of your pages as the page title. Um, but in itself, that page title should also have more context, okay? So URL, page title, and then the next thing is the H1. Would so, you mind refreshing this page, Tim? Hmm? Would you mind refreshing this page? I just made a change, I wanna see if it goes in. There yeah, go. now sprout organic soil. Yeah, see, organic, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that is one of, of your keywords, you know, because it's like, you are a premium product, you are organic, it's, you know, so, um yeah and did you add the the redirect too 
like if I go back to the other URL and refresh it, will I still uh, get to it now? I don't see where the 301 is. He's in okay. Shopify right now, yeah. messing around. Yeah. I think it'll work still. Yes, it does. I can see it. So did, did you see what I did there? I removed this here. I hit enter and you see it now redirect hmm. to that new URL. Oh, okay. great job, Shopify. Well done, Shopify. Yeah, so maybe they have this like baked in for all the all the users that don't really, you know, like seem to, you know, that aren't aware of this and they just start mm -hmm. changing everywhere else. Okay, so we got this, the URL, the page title, and then the H1. So here the H1 is just sprout dot, you know, and for 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 the most part, this is kind of just aesthetics here, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's like I can see that you don't want to clutter it with a lot of like other stuff, you know? So let's see what this is here. Ah, okay. H2. So, yeah, so you see this one. Yeah, it's an H2. Good. So good, it's formatted as an H2. And... um. The thing is, though, the most important uh, headline that you have on your website is the H1. So what I would recommend is if you want to keep it just kind of like from the looks this way, then I would remove the H1 here and just assign this um, the same design, but a, sim but a different uh, class, you know, and then here like this could actually, this would be a much more meaningful H1 because that is what it's about. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. And then if, if we go down, like, let's see what this is. See this, for example, is just uh, as a P, which is a paragraph. Okay. So this should actually be an H3, for example. Okay. Why don't we make that change. I think I'm doing it right. Oh, you're doing it right. We're gonna find if this does it. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty oh, simple. In your editor. Oh, I see. Does it? Neat. Yeah, it's like in in your page builder. You know, you you essentially just mark it up and then reformat it at H one, two, three, four, five, or something. You know. <clears throat> so and then let's see what this one is. So this one you also may like is an H two. You know which maybe could even be an H3. And I would probably change this to, you may also like one of these other soil mixes or something like this. More because context. Exactly. Now you're, you know, picking up on this. And it's like, especially making this into the, um, like a headline. Would you go into Sprout again? Uh, yeah, I can just uh, refresh it once more here. Scroll up. So yeah. I needed that organic seed starting mix. Is that, yeah, okay. It, that, that's that's like, like if you do this to all of your uh, products and pages, kind of like going through this URL, page title, H1, and then what others do, do I have there? So, um, I mean, I'm not like a, I'm like not not too dogmatic or evangelist about like uh, specific as like on page. Uh, like there's some people that might say you should only have one H1 on your website and everything else should be H2, H3, H4 and so on. That's kind of like what I mostly go about. One H1. There might be some people that say, well, you can also have two or three. It's not, not a big deal. But ideally, the H1 really ties into what the page title and the URL and then everything else is H2. And yeah, you should have a, a couple more H2s maybe uh, or an H3. But yeah, you also don't want to clutter this too much and like add too much to it. I, I can see that. Um, but like, yeah, it's like essentially about like here, I can definitely see an opportunity to add more local keywords. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We could we could list all of for every product in the delivery section or yeah. something like that. Like we have pickup, but we could also say we could say delivery parameters for, and then we can just name 
all of the towns that we would deliver to. Yes. It's and, including but not limited to. Exactly. And and then you don't even want to just call it delivery thing. You want, would call it soil delivery. You know, again, linking mm -hmm. your keywords um, together. And compost delivery. Got it. Yes. Yes. So, and here's the local pickup, shipping delivery. Yeah. So yeah, here, like the same thing. It should say like compost shipping or something like this or soil shipping local, blah, blah, you know? Um, it's gotta be everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, essentially, like, I mean, you started, you know, to just kind of make some tweaks, but I would really look at this a little bit more strategically, like, like you know, um, have you ever, like, um, you he heard about uh, a site map? Yeah, I think so. So, you know, like, what you can do is... Um, you can like I'm not sure if there's one inside um inside oh, Shopify. inside Shopify. Uh there might be what essentially what you can do is you can put in a URL here in like a sitemap editor and it'll scan all your pages based on you know your internal links and what it can find, and it pops out uh a list. And that's actually a good starting point. So you can keep track of like, did I actually, do I have all my redirects in place uh, in case, hmm. you know, you don't have a system where th that gets added automatically, but it's also a good way to, to like look over and see. So for example, like why does it even have the word pages in here? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that's something that I would uh, essentially eliminate because it's, it's meaningless. You know, I would, I would um, replace it with something that is more like an of you know again like an umbrella for you guys. So you can see there it shows me uh, ninety nine pages. So I could like export this as a as a file, and now I can like I have a, an overview here of all your, you know, of all the stuff that's there. So. So this is, is like a good way to like say, oh, okay, here's a blog. Um, so like, for example, raise your garden game. Let's kind of like look at this blog, just see what's happening here. He was a guy we hired to write some blogs for a while. Yeah, okay. So when you like, first of all, you can see that's an external link, external link, external link, external link, external link to all mm -hmm. like all different places. Plus, look, there they should all be opening up in a new tab. See, like if I click on this link here, I'm exiting your page and I'm ending up at Bob Villa, you know. Okay. So like what should happen is like this should be open in a new tab. So then people can like, oh, I want to like look at this, but the moment they close it, they're back on your page. So that you're not like letting them go. And then here, uh, more external links, more external links, you know, to, to the Home Depot. It's like you're giving the Home Depot backlinks, right? Like we talked about authority. So it's like, yeah, it makes sense in your context. But like, um, like the only internal link that you have here is Tilth Bedding Mix Grow has the water retention qualities and nutrient contents uh, he prefers. But if you actually look, it goes to the homepage, hmm. okay? So let me just ask you, where should that link actually point to? To the grow product page. Yes, now we're talking, okay. So yeah, I would definitely reduce the amount of um, external links here. And it's like external links are, are totally valid. You know, it's good to have them, but you have like about one, two, three, four, I don't know, like almost like 10 external link and one internal link. It should be more like five internal links and two external or something. Hmm. That makes more sense. So, yeah. 
And then also in these blog articles, that's a, 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 a like non-cringe way to add more local keywords as well. You know, like I would essentially go in all of those and um, and optimize them by adding some local keywords in there. Hmm. Um, yeah, and essentially like use your use your sitemap to really give everything a good review um, of like, uh, like, you know, this is kind of like a, the status quo right now. Let's go and check out what we got here. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of like the same pattern, a lot of external links. Mm -hmm. well, there's uh, two and, internal links. Hmm? There's two so internal like, links. Yeah, and, and this one's actually goes to the product page, so that's good. Um, yeah, so then if we like go to the bottom, yeah, you can see like you have the, you have your Google business listing linked. That's great, you know. Um, like we're we're almost like closing in on the hour, uh, yeah. and you can you can feel like you know we could probably go on for another hour. And I mean, mm -hmm. I check my calendar. I actually might have a little bit extra time. Um, yeah, are there any other like broad categories of thing of, of things that we should be doing? Um, or like yeah, we haven't really talked much about offsite optimization other than posting on like Facebook marketplace. Yes. So the one thing you need to do is get yourself like a review process. Okay. So the, the thing is, is really with reviews, um, you have to ask for them. It's, it's, it's super simple. You know, it's really about asking and making it a habit of asking. It's like essentially anybody that works at Rust Belt Riders and Till Soil needs to be like primed on like whenever I have a conversation with anybody that seems happy, okay, <laughs> you know, like someone, I mean, imagine how many conversations did you have where someone came back and said, oh my God, I love this product, like my plant, you know. So, so often. Okay. It just happen and all the, the time. All the time. I know, I know. And those are the moments where you literally have to be like, you know what? other people should have the opportunity to like find that product. Right. Mm -hmm. and the thing is like, what asking about reviews is like, you don't have to make it about your business. You don't have to say like, I need to sell more soil, you know, mm -hmm. because most of the people care about what you do. They want more compost to be made, or they want other growers to have good organic soil, you know, not crappy soil. So make it about the mission and make it a habit. Like, like literally, I can look at any business and can tell you whether or not they're making it a point of asking. You know, it's like I have I have the little worm workers, and I had a, at a time I had like I don't know three four times more reviews than you guys, and I had only made like fifty transactions, right? Like my like like lifetime value over like years, but I made a point of like asking mm -hmm. everyone that left my house essentially, yeah. like saying, oh, you know what? Um, I'm going to send you a link. If you could leave a Google review, more people can find me, you know, more people can find this. And, um, and they're like, Oh my God. Yeah, I'll do this. And like, from my experience is really, if you ask a hundred percent, 50, like they will all say, yes, I'll do that. You know, especially if you ask someone like, they just like smiled at you and like told yeah. you how great mm -hmm. all that stuff is. Then yeah. 50, like 50% 50 will follow through. That's the thing. Pretty it's good. like, you know, if you get, if you can get just half of the people that say yes for like leaving a review to actually leave the review. We'll have hundreds. I'm going to write one right now. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like, so, and the other thing is like, what you don't want to do is like put it in your newsletter and then like, and like get like 50 at once that looks unnatural to Google and then they might flag them or not publish them. And then it, it's not good. You know, that's why you need to have a process of doing it regularly instead of like, Hey, Oh, let's ask all at once. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. don't do that. That's like, if you haven't been doing it, don't try to catch up by, by, by doing that. Just really make it a point to ask. It's, it's super simple. It's, it's trivial. It's like, 
but it's it's like I think one of the biggest levers you can pull. Cool. And if you want to if you want to say anything at all, you could tell them, you know, just to like kind of talk about their experience. Like essentially, the more they write, the more likely they are to use like the city that oh. they live in. Again, mm -hmm. local keyword. Okay, the product that they used. Again, keyword. Um, another thing is photos. Up, like upload the, the photos. Okay, um, and then. You know, with the review process, what's actually great about that, if you make it an integrated process, you can screenshot all these uh, reviews and reuse them as social media content. You know, it's like the reviews, essentially, the, 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 the social media content writes itself. So what we do is we'll take the review and we have a chat GPT prompt, okay? Hmm. So what I do is like I copy and paste the text of the review with my prompt into ChatGPT and say, basically create a caption for this based off this review. So the workload is like super, it's super slim. And it's like, we have sometimes, you know, if, if I, I like, for example, right now you have like, what, what you got like here, 30 or, or 40 reviews. Yeah. You could just, you could go through that. You, you can do screenshots. Um, and and you have like 30 pieces of content ready to go. It's like I could like you could make that, you know, within half a day's work or something. Right, right. You just have a like funnel. Yes. Yeah. And it, like, so I don't know, like, do you have a software or something like a CRM that you're using? Like, um, like, do you have a, like, so example for all of your online purchases, you should have like a, a, the thank you note, you know, do you, do you, do you do delivery notes? Do you have like something integrated with your shipping or something where it says like your shipping, your thing just got dropped off or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. we do that. Oh, like go into that and look if there's a default text that you can change and just add a sentence. Hey, and don't forget to leave us a review. You right. know, I mean, it, it's as simple as that, right? In the email and, um, so like your Google business profile has a URL that you can share. Um, and what I essentially used to do is like I have um, for my clients, they would all kind of like interact with me through text messages. So I don't know how you interact with most of your customers, but if you have their text, if you have their, their text messaging thing, tell them, hey, can you leave a review? You know what? I'm just going to send you the link to your phone and and then you wait until they leave, you pull out your phone, you copy and paste the link in, send them the text message, they right. get that thing. All they do is they click on it, leave the review, it's super simple for them. And it just increases the amount of reviews you're gonna get by, I mean, you have 30, and how long have, has Tilt been in business? Right, right, Three right, years, right? right? Yeah, you could use some more. And the, the, the thing is, it's really, this will give you a, a big edge because like Home Depot and Lowe's, they don't get a lot of reviews. And if they do, it's usually about like something that annoyed about something in plumbing, you yeah, know, it's yeah. related to like your niche. So that's really the, the, yeah, the biggest thing to do. We're on um, it. Yeah. W one other thing is, is also other um, like business profiles that you could do, you know? So like we use a tool, um, it's called Yext and it's like, um, it's something, well, it's more, it's more like made for marketing agencies where we use it for our customers. But I think there is a, a similar thing. It's called Bright Local. And it's essentially a platform where you, where you put in your business data and it will shoot it out to, like in our case, about 70 other places and create you a business profile in that place. And you have essentially one like form where you put all your data, your business hours, your description, your logo, your photos, and, you know, all your stuff. And, you know, like Garmin GPS, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So like, there's still a website out there for Garmin GPS, right? And you get a business profile there. You know, the yellow pages, you remember those? <laughs> okay. You can still have a business listing on the yellow pages. So that's again, like getting on the other 
platforms. So if you create like those 70 or 50 or whatever business listings mm. description, then it's, um, it's, it's a citation. You're sure. mentioning the name, you're mentioning the keywords, you're putting in your URL, your phone number. And the reason why we like to use a tool for that, I mean, it saves you so much time. Yeah. Plus it'll stay consistent. So there's like something called like the NAP name, address, phone that always needs to be consistent or, you know, Google thinks, well, what is it really? You know, it like gets confused. So it keeps it straight and um, it's a, it's a simple way to, to leverage that. And then like, like, I don't, you didn't repeat it, but like write it down, go through all the existing customers that you have that word of mouth relationship with and check out their website and see if there is like some sort of blog or other angle for you, uh, for them to mention you, you know, I mean, most of them mm. would probably be happy to do that for you. All you just have to do is like be persistent, ask, mm. make it as easy as possible for them, you know, provide them with a, a photo or a picture or something, provide them with your logo, provide them with the URL. And then if you're like, go, if you're like really strategically do that, don't just use your URL tilth.com. You could actually ask them, like write a text and put in two links to the product page. Like here's, oh, we love using Tilth, link to Tilth. And we we especially love their sprouting mix and their other mix. So now you're, you're adding two links instead of one and they're like going to your sub pages, which gives more authority to those uh, sub pages and you want to have more authority towards your product pages. Wow. Yeah, that's, there's a lot of work to do, but there's that's like stuff that we can do. Right. It's, it's like I said, it's not, it's not really rocket science. It's just a lot yeah. of just getting it done. And like, what I would suggest is start with that keyword list here. Wait, maybe I should actually like, maybe I can show you one. Um, let's see. I have one that, so just as an example. No, that's not the right thing. But yeah, what I could do is like, if you make that, I can, uh, I can look over and give you some, some um, feedback for it. Yeah, sounds great. Um, also, what you can do is, that's actually a good, good thing. Like, like you could use ChatGPT for that. You know, it's yeah. like. Um, you can give it your URL. It has browsing now, so you, it can kind of like give it a little bit of context, but essentially you need to tell it what you want to do. Okay. You want to do on-page optimization. You want to categorize your keywords. You want it to brainstorm on specific keywords and come up with synonyms for them or alternative uh, phrases so that you have like essentially, um, yeah, and then cluster it. You know, it could say like, "Hey, make clusters that that are that have like a hierarchy that makes sense." Yeah, and then and then share that list with me, and I'll look over, and I I can like tell you if there's like something that's that might go in the right uh, wrong direction. But for the most part, you just um, keep it everywhere. We just need to do a website, making sure that all of the website stuff is. Yeah, I mean, it sounds it. like yeah. plenty of work for Claire. Yeah, <laughs> that she could do remotely if she wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So, and and um, so here, I'll just like one other thing as an example. That's like a you know here for a garage door. You can see we have the services, okay, but then about your service area, and then here are all these local sub pages. So, and if you look it up in the URL, you know, like if I do. Cleveland Heights or whatever, you you'll see that um, otherwise, see it says like service area yeah. and then Cleveland Heights and it says garage door repair in Cleveland Heights, you know, and it's like and that's the H one obviously because <laughs> that is you know that is the like first thing and then we're leveraging 
the the these um, reviews, and that's actually something that I would do in your case too. So in this in this case, this is actually linked to Google Maps. Look, it's like if I click on this, I'll find this profile from this person that left the review, and you can actually find the review on Google. So it's like this is again like sending signals back and forth um, with it. Oh yeah, and then like ask people to upload pictures. So it's, that's like it almost like getting into uh, like the nitty gritty, but you know like how photos have like geocodes in them? You know, like like uh, yes. GPS. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If, you, if, you, if you don't turn it off on your iPhone, it'll right. like, it's, it's in there it, automatically, and it knows where you are. Yeah, you that. That. I would forget right. about it. Right. Yeah. So now, if you ask anyone, "Hey, can you upload a photo?" and they upload it from Rocky River or they upload it from wherever, you know, that's another signal that um, that that you're like adding to your mix. Yeah. For I'm gonna be. Um, yeah. Well, good luck with all the optimization stuff. And uh, like the thing is, what I said about the review process, I would apply the same for Rust Belt riders, not just till so. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same. It's the same. You know. Yeah. Reviews and and SEO stuff. It's it's not like that. All of this will just go overnight but it's it, like all on-page optimization is the foundation for years right it's like mm -hmm. I mean, you'll have to go back every once in a while and make sure it's still like it's right but if that foundation is not there you won't make that progress over years and then the off page like once you have all this on page you want to do like a little bit of off page like every month just like keep that in mind like, like I said, like relist stuff on Facebook Marketplace or- And that cracks you know. me up. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have, but honestly, you gotta probably be careful with like anything like cannabis related on Facebook. You don't That's want to- right? Yeah. So like you either have to like read between the lines or- yeah. you know, I, I got like, some good suggestions recently, which is like issue two passed and you can just say it for your issue two plants. Um, for example, yeah, or living soil, I think is right. is like a keyword that people catch on to, yeah. And um, well, I think for, I mean, like besides that, we could look at like where to find leads and um, do some outreach. I mean, it's obviously you won't find a list for just leads for home growers, you right. know. Um, but we can definitely find a list for like farmers and like any sort of like commercial, um, ventures. It's not, I mean, I've, I've actually found farmers, like are the farmers that are our customers. Cause it's not just broad acre crops. We're not, we don't, those aren't our yeah. customers. Yeah. It's like vegetable growers. And so sometimes a lot of vegetable growers have very little online presence. Some have good online presence. Many do not. Yeah. Well, what you got to do is, is you got to find the associations that they're in. So are you like, are you like connected with the North Union Farmers Market? Yep. So like you got all of those growers yep. already. Okay. Yep. And um, yeah, Ophira, maybe there's. Okay. Financially it's... grown. Yeah. The, the uh, National Organic Program list is public record. Um so every certified organic farm is in a database because it's a federal program. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess it really depends. Maybe there's like a like a region locally where you could do something um, like actually like offline. If I think about like Amish people, they're mm -hmm. probably not going to like uh, research someone, uh, you know, like on the Internet. Although, yeah. I mean, some we of them have. And, yeah. I mean, I would say what we do for the Amish, we go to a couple of conferences a year and we also advertise in um, this very old timey in truck patch news. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, so what about retail? You said retail. 
Yeah, retail is definitely a place where we think we can see a lot of growth. Um, mm -hmm. Because right now we get asked all the time, where can I get tilth soil near me? And the answer is, how many retail? Working on it. How many retail locations do you have right now? Uh, like fifteen or twenty some, um, and a lot and of them are don't have all of our products. Okay. And are they, do they fall in like the same category? I mean, do you have like some stuff, do you have it at like Rising Star Coffee? We had a, we have small bags at Phoenix Coffee. Yeah, yeah, Phoenix. Yeah. So, cause like, I feel like, I mean, obviously, I mean, have you ever like made a list of all garden centers in Ohio? Yeah. Yes, we have. Okay. And, and what's like what's the hold up they're not interested or like what's the uh, feedback you, you you tell me brother and i'll yeah. tell you i'll say i got dirt the hold up yeah. is that we're not we're not in bfg and we're not gonna be um okay what's that's a big, it's a big distributor they're huge they're a national distributor that supplies to lots of independent garden stores and you can just beep boop pop get everything through them yeah, but just, they also are you know uh <laughs> They take the cream off. in terms of how much how much they want to pay which but, is as little as but possible would it, but would it be would it would it still be worth it no like, for the quantity like if no. they plug into we 200 cannot, stores and, and it, okay well i mean Maybe i would five probably, years then then i would probably look into these alternative places that might have extra space because their business is changing or something. And I mean, are you in like, have you tried like, like kind of like craft local plant stores? Yes. We're in a lot of those, but those, I mean, yeah. All the, the, like the cute indoor house plant places. Yes. We're in a lot of those, but those are this big. And like, I guess I'm thinking specifically about, home gardeners that are looking for a seed starting mix and raised bed mix and cannabis growers that are looking for bloom in quantity. Yeah. I mean, my, um, uh, my aunt mentioned that you like were at the Gates Mills garden club, I think like last summer yeah. or something. So you have those gardening clubs on your radar. Yeah, sure do. All we get, we get asked to speak at garden clubs all the time. Okay. So how about like maybe putting a, a program together where, you essentially offer the garden club to do like a um almost like a bulk order where they say hey now special offer for garden club members 20 percent off if if you get like to a certain uh kind of like quantity and then they organize and reach out to their members and say hey do you need soil and if like 10 people or 15 people kind of like come together for their spring order um Maybe just like kind of like putting it together in a different program that you can out, reach out with instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to do a talk at your club, like saying, hey, just bundle your purchase power and you all get a better deal. Gotcha. Um, yeah. I mean, are you like connected with all these mas master gardeners programs? Yeah, I've I've spoken at many master gardener programs. Um, we haven't really. I think I think we could ex we could use those more. Maybe try the same approach. Yeah, like there's probably like a head. I mean, I know like the master gardeners program. They have a booth at the market like right. every. So there must be someone that's coordinating that. Right. So if you can find the head and essentially offer the same deal. Mm -hmm. If you can get 10 people together, you'll get 10%. If you get 20 people together, mm -hmm. you get 20% or whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. come up with some, something. And then again, like it'll be easy for you to deliver. You'll have like one drop off point at their clubhouse. Mm -hmm. So it's like less, you know, mm -hmm. for the whole ship, you'll, you'll uh, save on that. Um, yeah. What else could there be? Uh, like about the retail locations. So it's really about that they, just want to have the order process pretty simple and they order through that BFG thing. Mm -hmm. So 
so then they're like not open to ordering from you at all because that that just, just cranks yeah the it's just more difficult mildly more difficult hmm. i mean that's my impression we also we need to, we need them to see that there's demand for it too yeah but how can there be demand for it if it's not in the store yeah i mean you, yeah so i mean maybe that could be a campaign of just being persistent like essentially like i would like make a campaign that sends them an email like once a month or like every other week until they either unsubscribe or it goes on in, in perpetuity like something that's automated where it's like well okay they unsubscribed fine but like being polite you know and just just like being persistent essentially like uh, sitting down, writing 12 emails, and then you have like a sequence for a whole year. And then it starts, it starts the next year, it just starts over again. Or you update it, you know, or you add to it. Um, and well, because that's the other thing is like some people, you contact them once and they might not be perceptive to it. Yeah. But like if you keep nagging them in a little, you know, a little while, maybe they're just going to yeah. add you because they think, well, they're so persistent. They they just keep, you know, like mm -hmm. telling you to, to list them. And then the other thing is like, if you really want to uh, kind of like, we've talked about these advocacy tools, right? You could mm -hmm. have some on your website with like where you add your dream distributors and you tell people, oh, you live in Rocky River? Well, yeah. on a website and send that gardening store an email yeah. from you. Yes, you know, I like that. Forever. Yeah. And like once they get like, maybe it might just take two or three emails. Right, it really probably won't take that many. Yeah. So like, if they feel like, oh, they they really have some followers. They if they can get other people to send these messages on their behalf, you know, then, um, I mean, you know, you could like, that's like kind of like gray zone, but like you could like make a sock puppet and like essentially talk to them from. You know, like just like make three, four email accounts and and yeah, uh, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, me neither. I, I'm just saying, it's like, you know, yeah. You I mean, I think it'll be easy. It's easy enough for people to like, yeah. Because I ask, I specifically ask people like, where would you like to see it? And they they give a name, and then yeah. I should just like turn around and be like, all right, let's call them right now and put you on the phone, <laughs> or like. Or like exactly. send an email. That's a little easier for most yeah. people than and than an immediate phone call, probably. But yeah. So like think about this as um as we talked about implementing the review process. Yeah. Like making it an actual. You know how you have like standard operating procedures. It's like yep. this is how we load a truck. This is how we unload mm -hmm. it because for like work safety or whatever. Like maybe have that pre templated email yep. uh, on your phone or in your inbox sitting there. Yep. And not just you, all the other folks too. And essentially then say, oh yeah, you want an NS store? I'll send you a message with the address, their email, and that pre-templated thing. And you can modify it. Or like, please make it your own and just send it to them. And then it'll probably be the same. 100% will say, oh yeah, of course. And then like 50% will actually send that email. And yeah. Cool. Well, that's kind of like what um what what I have left to brainstorm, but um yeah. in terms of like coming up with some sort of um deeper plan, I think we'll have to reconnect and see totally the dots there. I'm gonna stop the recording now. Well, that was it. I hope you guys um had a good learning experience. Could take away some things that you are able to just uh, implement in your business on your website. I, um, you know, that, that's what we really, that's why we did it. Um, share it with uh, your community composter friends in your network um, so that this message or, you know, this stuff won't just sit on the server and, and rot there, <laughs> but it actually um, matures into something that's valuable for the composter, the community composter community. And, um, if you want to learn more about the Compost Marketing Agency, head over to compost-marketing.com and you know that, that's, that's where we are and uh, yeah, 
maybe follow me on LinkedIn. I post uh, pretty much every day about compost and marketing. Uh, we also post on Instagram and um, try to really help everyone that makes compost to make more and to sell more compost, to collect more food waste and have a bigger impact. Our mission is to make compost mainstream. Thanks for watching.